Hi everybody, this is Anne. Crazing occurs on pottery when the glaze contracts more than the clay body during cooling. The tension causes the glaze to form spider cracks. This is considered a glazing defect when it happens. While it's not something you want on your food safe pottery, this flaw can be used to your advantage to create a very unique and beautiful surface texture on sculptural pieces. As a matter of fact, people create glaze recipes just for that purpose. In this video, we're going to experiment with a specialty crackle glaze we found called Marina Flake 2. The recipe is pretty simple, and we've included it in the description for you. I'll walk you through how I made it. I was careful to wear my mask for protection. I multiplied the ingredients by 100 to make this 1000 gram batch, and measured out each one on the digital scale. I dumped out the ingredients as gingerly as possible to avoid unnecessary dust. For more instruction on calculating the amount of glaze you want to make, check out our video on making glazes. I was a little worried that the lack of clay in the recipe would leave the ingredients to deadpan in the glaze bucket. So I improvised and decided to add a 1 percentage of bentonite and see if that made a difference. Now to add the ingredients to the water. A few years ago, a friend of mine showed me her technique, which I really liked. She started with a little water in the bucket, then gradually added handfuls of the recipe so that all the mixture dissolved and soaked up the water. The ingredients floated on top of the water until they were saturated and became heavy enough to sink into the bucket. When no more ingredients would sink, I knew I needed to add more water. I continued with this process until all the ingredients were dissolved. This method takes a little patience as you have to wait for the ingredients to sink, but in the end you'll end up with a more consistent glaze. I then used my immersion blender to mix it well. I sift the glaze three times, first through a 60 mesh screen and then an 80 mesh screen. Because there was no clay in the recipe, it went through pretty quickly. By the third sieving, you can see that much of the ingredients didn't want to suspend in the water, but instead wanted to stick to the bottom of the bucket. I used my spoon to chip it away and then pushed it through the final screening. I had heard that if you dissolve Epsom salt in hot water and add a little to the bucket, it'll help the ingredients to stay suspended in the water better. So I added two half teaspoons of the Epsom salt to the watery mixture. Once I mixed that up, you can see by my fingers the glaze became much thicker and I couldn't feel any residue at the bottom of the bucket. I dipped a test tile in it to see how the flow was. It didn't appear to be too gloppy or too runny, but was just right. In the meantime, I threw and hand built a few pieces and bisque fired them to use as samples for the glaze. I wasn't sure if the glaze would run, so I thought I would test it just on the inside of this bowl that had a swirl undulation in the center. I poured this one and let it absorb, then poured it back out. The next is a bowl that I brushed a coat of blue underglaze in before the bisque, just to see what it would do. Wow! The glaze really dried fast and became brittle, so I had to work fast to clean up the edges. The next sample was this cute little shell bowl with subtle texture in the bottom. I also poured that one. This bowl had not only my English porcelain, but those dots are high water earthen red clay. I wondered if the different clays would make any difference. I did figure out that if I dampened a sponge, it was a little bit easier to clean up. 
I was a little afraid to test this on the outside of a pot for fear of the glaze running, so I threw this one with a wide belly to give the glaze a place to rest. I taped off the top and bottom of the piece to control the glaze a little more. This next piece had a deep wavy texture carved into it. Jim taped the top and bottom of it to control the running and he requested that I brush this one on. I used a hacky brush for this but had a little problem getting it to flow into the crevices before it dried. As the glaze was powdery, I worked it into most of the bare spots with my fingers. Jim asked if I would add one more layer to the glaze, so I brushed one more over top of the waves. When I pulled the tape off, I realized how thick the glaze is. I can't wait to see what that produces. On this vase, we decided to test to see if thickness made a difference to the look of it. On the first side, I brushed on one layer of glaze only. On the second side, I brushed two layers of glaze. On the third side, I brushed three layers and let that dry. Jim and I cleaned them up and even added some other glaze to a few of them. I put them all in the kiln and fired them to cone 5. When I took them out of the kiln, you can hear them start to ping. Actually, this was the crazing or the crackling of the glaze. And here are the results. There are cracks all over the pieces. It didn't seem to matter what clay I was using. The cracks showed up on the porcelain and the red clay. I love how it covered over the Amico Baby Blue underglaze. The thick glaze smoothed right over it and produced the same type of cracks as the others. Here's the bowl without the underglaze but with the swirl. Where the glaze was thick, the cracks were farther apart, and where it was thin, you got tighter cracking. Here's the shell bowl. The cracks seemed to follow the undulations on the surface, which was cool. Here's the teardrop vase. Nice wide cracks along the center part and tighter cracks on the top and the bottom. This one was the layered piece. The one coat side produced smaller cracks. The two layered side resulted in bigger cracks and the three layered side were even farther apart. I wanted to see those cracks better, and remembered that a friend of mine, Tiny Prince, stained her pieces with permanent inks. We thought that'd be fun to try. I had several inks and a large test tile to experiment with. I shook them up really well before applying them. I found that the best results were when I applied the ink and gave it a little time to absorb before wiping it off. The darker colors worked the best. I applied the black ink to the wavy, deep textured piece first. I was hoping it would run more, but I ended up working it in with my fingers. You can see the bare areas where the glaze had trouble filling into the cracks. The inks really highlighted the random cracks following the lines of the heavy texture. I used the browner ink for the white red clay bowl and swirled it into the cracks. You can clearly see that in this case, the clay that I used didn't seem to matter. I got the same cracks on both. On the shell piece, I used the blue ink along the bottom and swirled that around. I then used a coppery ink along the rim to see what effect that would have. I 
I had to take it to the sink to clean it up, but I like the two-toned aspect of it and I love the cracks along the undulations. In the white test bowl with the swirl on the bottom, I used the blue ink. I love the look of that color with the white clay, but I couldn't see the swirl detail at the bottom. One thing I did notice is that the cracks went all the way through to the outside of the bowl on this one. I suspect it's because I only glazed one side, and during the firing, it created too much tension to where it developed fissures. I decided to use that copper ink on the three-sided piece with the layered glaze. I layered that with blue and a little gray too. The tight crazing effect really shows up on the thin layered side. On the two coat layered side, the cracks get a little wider, and on the third side, you can see that they're farther apart. Now for the blue underglaze bowl, I thought I'd try using the white ink. I really poured it into the bowl and let it set up before wiping it out. You can see the white lines appear. I was hoping they'd be a little darker, but it's still lovely. Now for the teardrop. Jim taped the top and bottom, and then I used a stark black for this piece as I wanted a real contrast. As I started to pour the ink, you can see how the crackle lines wicked up the ink and it began to spread over the surface. I love that stained glass effect, and the randomness is just perfect. I had a lot of fun experimenting with this specialty glaze. I have to admit that I'm a little disappointed that I can never use it on my functional pieces, but I may have to make a few sculptural pieces just to play around with that crackle effect. Thanks to the newest members of our research facility team. And if you'd like to support our work, click on the super thanks or the buy me a coffee link. In any case, we invite you to subscribe to our channel and we'll see you next time in the studio.